PDF files can require a lot of work. Building structure into them is essential for those using screen readers and can help those who are navigating a large document. Page numbers are essential because providing navigation points will help generate structure for the reading experience. Blind researchers and students need to know what page of an article or book they are citing so that the page numbers have to be accurate. In this case, I have a article here with five pages. However, the graphical part of the article shows me that they're actually 79 through 83, not one through five. So when a researcher is trying to find what page to cite and they want to navigate in the document, they need to have this changed. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Click on this arrow, come up to thumbnails, and then you click this drop down, go to page labels, and then you're going to change this pages to all and change the numbering sequence to start at 79. And once I click OK, you'll see up here that the, the page that was number one is now syncing up with 79. And if I go to the next page, which has no page number, if I go to the next page, you see it says 81 and it says 81 up here. One of the keystrokes that people use who are using screen readers is the control shift and key and then they can type in what page they want to go to. So if I type 79 here and click OK, it goes back to the top of the article. So that's why you need to make sure your page numbers are sequential and working so that someone can navigate using them. A screen reader user is going to use the headings and page numbering to navigate your document. Another way besides page numbering is to use the heading structure of the document. If your document has tags, you can click on this tag icon and you can go through the headings in the document and you can see what's going to be the natural structure semantically for this file. However, you can also go up here to bookmarks and see if you have a bookmark setting in place. But in this document, I don't. To add that, I would come up here to the bookmark option and then click new bookmarks from structure. And then it allows me to choose what I'm going to build a structure from. So I'm going to use the H1, and then I hold down shift and click H6. So H1, H2, H3, and H6 are going to be my structure. And I'm going to click OK. And then it wants me to title it. So I'm going to call it structure. And then I'm going to click this arrow. And you'll see these are the items that have been built into the structure. It is important that the headings are in a sequential order so that navigation is logical. Page numbers should also have tags. In order for us to make sure that our heading structure is sequential, we're going to have to go back into the tags. So we're going to come in here and you see that there's an H1. It should be followed by an H2. And there's an H2. Here's another H2 abstract and then next is introduction and if I come down the page you'll see it says H6 and this is incorrect this is not what we want to see this says 80 and what that means is it's marked this up as a page number but I didn't find our page number for 79 so the way I'm going to find that is I'm going to come up to the document and I'm going to highlight 79 and then I'm going to come over here and find tags from selection and you see that that selection is an H6 and it should be following an H2 and so that's not what we want we want that to say H3 so I'm going to change this by double clicking on it and then clicking one more time changing the 6 to a 3 Okay, so now we know the page number is now 
proper. And I'm going to come back down to the other H6, which is the page number, which is over here for page 80. Now, I could leave that like that, but I would, of course, have to change this to B3. And there isn't even any text there. So it's going to have some structure. The page 80 is now going to have a page number on it. And then I'm going to come down further. And you see this is kind of laborious. I'm going to come down to the next H6. And this tag should say 80. What happened to 81? Oh, this is 82. Okay, and again, I'm going to have to change that to an H3. Now I'm going to go back to page 81 over here, highlight it, and then I'm going to click Find Tag from Selection. And it says the selection wasn't found. So the problem with that is we need that to actually be marked. So I'm going to have to come over to the order here, find the drop down, click Show Reading Order Panel. Then I'm going to have to highlight the content and then change it to an H3 heading. Then I click close and go back to tags. I should be able to go to that page number, highlight it, and then find tag from selection. And sometimes it's not so easy to tell where you are because it, the tags panel is so long. But you do see that it's now marked up as an H3. So all my page numbers are now marked up as H3, except for the last one we have to check on that. And that's probably an H6, and there it is. If I drop it down, you see there's page 83. And I want to double click and then click one more time. Change the 6 to a 3. All right. Now, I'm curious to see how that's affected our bookmarks. I'm going to have to come up to bookmarks. And I'm going to have to drop that down. And I'm going to have to do new bookmarks from structure. And I'm going to do H1 through H3 instead of through H6 and click OK. Now I have to add a new structure and then here on the old structure I'm going to delete that and then I'll drop the new structure down with it in place you can then click on any of the headings in the bookmarks and it will take you to the pages where they are and if you click on the page numbers it will take you to those pages and you see that any of these H3 headings though there isn't actually an 82 here page number there's no 82 on this page it takes you right there so if I start from 83 and then go back to 82 it's flipping the page so this is 81 and then this is 80 so now you have structure for your document where a screen reader user can find it and those using the bookmarks are going to be able to move through your content effectively. If you are an author of content, then you have control of the application which makes PDF files. But when you are not, you may need to check the accessibility of the file. Fortunately, Adobe Acrobat Pro provides the accessibility checker. There are two paths by which you can find the accessibility checker. You can either go to tools and you'll be inside the tools. You can type in the search accessibility and you'll see that it will take you right to that particular tool. You click open or you can find your right panel over here and look for the accessibility icon. Click on that and then open up the panel so you can see what you're doing and then you can run your full check. If you click that it will bring up this accessibility checker option. You just click start checking. Now I have my panel over here on the left 
where the icon now shows and it has several issues that need to be fixed. Especially important would be to have alt tags on these images. You see it says alt text one issue and if I drop that down you'll see all the figures in the document do not have alt tags. Now we're going to go back to our content about page numbering. You see that the accessibility checker never mentions page numbers and so you always have to check them manually. And this ends our lesson on page numbering and structure for PDF files for accessibility.